Grunts are kind of the easiest enemy in all of Halo to kill, pretty much. I think that contributes to why they were so much fun as an enemy across all the Halo games. Just bam, bam, bam. You could just pop them and they would die. Halo 1 and 2 had the Grunts down pretty cool, but we do have to say there was a major upgrade done to the Grunts by the time Halo 3 rolled around with the introduction of Suicide Grunts. These guys would just run in with their sticky grenades, go and ham, and actually could present a little bit of a threat, a pretty big upgrade to the Grunt. And on levels like Halo Reach Exodus, these hallways could actually be a little bit spooky in the tight corridors when all of a sudden these grunts just come running at you. And while the grunt may be the weakest of the Covenant, obviously these versions of the grunts are kind of a cool highlight point that make them even cooler than what they originally are and what purpose they serve. So what if we look at every single enemy across all of Halo? Well, things get a little bit more interesting. For instance, the jackals were pretty annoying kind of in Halo combat evolved to be honest. They would just spam the plasma pistol at you and have those shields that were kind of annoying, but dang, did they get an upgrade by the time Halo 2 rolled around and they gave these guys some beam rifles. Halo 2's jackal snipers are notoriously incredibly difficult enemies that just one-shot you on harder difficulties. They would later have to tone down the jackal a little bit, where in games after Halo 2, the jackal can definitely pack a punch and still kill you at times, but definitely not with the precision and brutalness that those Halo 2 Jackals had. So those are definitely the best ones. And on the weaker side of things, there were those blue shield Jackals that were kind of fun to punch, but you know, they were kind of weak. It is also worth noting that the Skirmishers were introduced in Halo Reach, which were a much faster and more aggressive variant of what the Jackals were. But I believe lore wise, they are separate from the Jackals in Halo Reach. So they're their own thing. Though in Halo Infinite, there are Skirmisher Jackals, which are Jackals that have a role similar to what the Skirmishers had, but these are actual forms of Jackals that are apparently top tier Jackals. Still not as strong as the Halo 2 Jackals but I did want to make that distinction. Elites were always really interesting because they were mostly in every Halo game a pretty big challenge, but one thing that was captured really well was Halo Reach's elites where they were kind of these much larger adversaries, but they still had the speed and agility that they are known for, and there was definitely something really satisfying about taking out an elite in Halo Reach. It also is worth noting that those honor guards in Halo 2 were really cool looking as well. But when we're going to talk about the worst elites, let's talk about those Halo 3 elites. I mean, they don't even fight back, guys. Okay, jokes aside, since in Halo 3 they were our allies and we weren't supposed to just start killing them. Halo 3 ODST with the Master Chief Collection update to Firefight actually introduced elites that are enemies. And that's interesting. We were always really confused how they would implement this because originally Halo 3 didn't have enemy AI programmed into the elites. And we assumed there would be some weird hybrid version of an elite AI programmed for Firefight, which more played like elites that were angry at a player for turning on them or something like that. Or maybe the AI that's used for them to fight against the Flood or even even the brutes in the level The Covenant in Halo 3. And we decided, yeah, let's just go look real quick. We loaded up on Legendary and these things killed us like crazy. We lowered the difficulty to easy just so we could kind of compare what they were like against the brutes. And they are a little silly. Their AI is a little interesting sometimes. But for the most part, whatever they strung together to make a mode in Firefight with the elites being an adversary was actually done well enough that they do feel kind of on par with what you would expect from what Halo 3 elites would have felt like if we did get to fight against them. I don't think that this is pinnacle Halo 3 elite AI by any means, but I was surprised. So while these ones still feel a little bit dumber than other iterations of Halo Elite, they still are impressive, but they also are the lowest version of them. Also, it was interesting to note that during this whole ODST firefight testing thing with the elites, we found that the heretic elites will actually just shoot at the engineers, which was weird. Then we took it a step further and realized that the heretic elites will fight against the non-heretic elites. We got some elite civil war crimes going on over here. Also, there's the heretic elites, which are different from the main elites in Halo 2. These guys don't pull out swords and 
and they're not really good at meleeing, so they automatically are worse than the rest of the Halo 2 elites. The Halo 4 elites feel very similar to the Halo Reach elites, and the Halo 5 elites definitely look really cool, but I also don't feel like there's anything overly special about the Halo 5 elites that made them stand out more, but I am a fan of the Arbiter's newer armor. I mean, I'm nostalgic for the old armor, but I do feel like the newer armor did look really cool. I would have liked to see that in Halo and they just never did. Let's talk about the Brutes in Halo. And at times I've definitely felt like the Brutes in Halo 2 feel maybe the most unbalanced out of all of them. They kind of come across as bullet sponges. You never really know where you stand with them and they're kind of more of this challenging type of enemy, but not in a polished way that you would normally feel when you're fighting off against elites, for example. By the time they reiterated the Brutes for Halo 3 and ODST, they retooled the armor system that the Brutes have so you can kind of tell how your progress is going fighting against these guys. And they had more diversity in the different ranks that the Brutes have, introducing some really cool, powerful Brutes as well. Since the Brutes were taking over as the main enemy for Halo 3 and in ODST as well, this adjustment was kind of a risky one and I think it still ended up working out. Brute Chieftains were really interesting too. With Halo 3, they took this whole idea of Tartarus and how he had his cool little hammer of sorts and they were just like hey there's a bunch of brutes and they all have hammers also so just just know that they weren't as menacing as Tartarus was they're not dedicated final boss fights but I mean the first time you fight a brute with a hammer or the first time you die to a brute with a hammer it is a memorable experience I guess on the flip side the most annoying type of brute that exists are any of the ones that just throw a signal flare whenever they feel like it just blinding you it <laughs> I don't know, the signal flare was so hilariously obnoxious and it doesn't even work on legendary difficulty if you're the one throwing it. So I don't know. I don't know what, what was going on here. It was a really mixed bag when it came to the Brutes, but overall the Halo 3 Brutes weren't all that bad. However, it's very clear that when Halo Reach came out, the Brutes definitely were kind of brought back down to this secondary type of enemy. No longer were they the primary focus, so they kind of felt like a side faction of enemies you're fighting, nothing nearly as strong or powerful as what the elites were. It was definitely a different style of gameplay on the levels where you do fight against brutes, but the big bad guys were definitely the elites who had taken the focus once again with Halo Reach. So at this point, Halo 3 slash ODST brutes were still the best, but Halo Infinite really did a great job retooling the brutes altogether and had a lot of that diversity that was present in Halo 3 back. And it was really cool to have a Halo game that focused on the brutes and elite dynamics together, kind of like what we saw hinted at in Halo 2, but we've never actually seen Brutes and Elites fight alongside each other in the dynamic where the Brutes were the higher class here. When Reach, Brutes were definitely below, and it's really well done here. I don't know, I'll go out on a limb and say that the Brutes are the best in Halo Infinite. Also, just while we're talking about Brutes, Combat Evolved doesn't have Brutes in them, but in MCC, if you blew up the engines with grenades or whatever, they do count as brute kills. I don't know why. <laughs> in Halo 2, we also saw the introduction of the drones or buggers. It was cool to have this flying adversary. They show up again in Halo 3 in a couple of levels and in ODST, they're expanded upon a little bit in a really cool way. There's even some buggers only in ODST that have shields with them, which is really cool. And then they also come back in Halo Reach, though I honestly, Honestly, mostly forget that they're even in the campaign, but they do show up in two different levels. I would say for the most part, they're still pretty deadly in Halo 2 and really easy to kill in Halo 3. So I would say Halo 3 probably has the weakest drones and then Halo 3 ODST has the coolest or best drones because they have those extra shields available. And then the spiritual successor to the drones, the skimmers. They're only in Halo Infinite and they're kind of like drones with armor. So that's kind of cool. So we'll we'll count them. Engineers! Those guys are in two games. We had them in ODST and then again we had them in Halo Reach. In ODST they're kind of fragile. You look at them the wrong way, they might explode. Halo Reach though, they actually have this little shield around them making them kind of difficult to kill. Okay, Hunters? This one's interesting. Someone in our chat apparently said that in Halo 5 Hunters are the hardest on Legendary, but I'm not super familiar with Halo 5 Legendary difficulty, so it could just be some random 12 year old exaggerating or maybe they actually were really hard to kill on legendary difficulty. On the flip side, the weakest hunters definitely were the
the Halo Combat Evolved Hunters. You could shoot them once in the back, and uh, that was that was easy. You could also just dance around them, punching them. We actually got really good at this, even in lasso difficulty. So yeah, CE Hunters aren't really all that threatening. Even their shots are kind of slow. And then it's also worth noting the Hunters in Halo 3 ODST randomly introduced a gold class Hunter, and that's just really cool. I don't know if logistically they were the hardest Hunters to fight out of all of them, but I mean, they're gold, so that's that's awesome. All right, then we get into some more interesting territory, the more obscure enemy classes, like the Prophets. I mean, there's the best one in Halo 2 that at least kind of fights back, and then there's the one in Halo 3 that dies in a cutscene, and then that one in Halo 2 that also died in a cutscene, and that's the Prophets. Okay, then we can look to the Sentinels. This is interesting, whether or not we should count the Enforcers as a Sentinel or their own thing. If they count as a Sentinel, then those are definitely the best ones because, I mean, look at it. They were only in Halo 2, unfortunately. I feel like the ones in Combat Evolved were a little more threatening to fight against at the beginning of Two Betrayals, but then also you do have a couple of Sentinels flying around in Halo 3 at the end, but those are kind of a joke. Like, they're really easy to kill in most cases, and they're just by the flood so I don't know I never really felt like they were too scary to fight we accidentally ended up fighting some in ODST's firefight mode on legendary with tough luck on and that was a little bit terrifying when they were creeping up on our door just trying to kill us so PTSD from that aside we're going to try to lean away from that I think if we're just counting Sentinels Halo 2 Sentinels were pretty aggressive as well not even including the enforcers and so I think Halo 2 had the best Sentinels overall and then the Halo 3 ones I guess were the next kind of worst ones. Okay and then there's the whole array of the flood that we have to deal with in the original Halo trilogy. Luke helped me out with the notes for this video and gave me some really great thoughtful points about the entire flood race. He said, the shooty ones that sometimes become like the big walking ones, I don't know but they are like strong AF. That's, thank you. And then he said, for the worst ones, the little crawlers, either they like do no damage even in mass, or if you are on lasso or something, it's like one little crawler that kills you, popcorn flood kind of weak to TBH, never a threat. Thank you, Luke. I really appreciate these notes. Yeah, the Flood's interesting. It varies game to game. There are some Flood forms that are more aggressive compared to other Flood forms, like the big tank ones that can be kind of annoying. The ones that turn into little spiders and just shoot really drive me insane. But it seems like the general consensus is Halo 3 Flood seems to be the most manageable across the three main Halo games that feature the Flood. Though the Halo 2 Flood, on the other hand, can just completely obliterate you no matter what difficulty you're playing on. The Flood is a pain in Halo 2 for sure. I think a lot of us have some PTSD memories from Combat Evolves library. I mean, we could just pick out a Rocket Flood from Halo 1 or 2 and just be like, yeah, this one is the best Flood. Like if you had to pick a Flood guy to be your ally and defend you for life, I mean, the Rocket Flood is a good option. There was the Flood Juggernauts that were originally supposed to be in Halo 2 got canceled, but then were brought back into Halo Fire Team Raven as this really boring boss fight. Those are really cool though, nonetheless. I am glad that they are now canon. I'd love to see them actually be featured in a real Halo game, maybe. Yeah, so in general, I think Halo 2 probably has the strongest Flood, followed by CE, and then Halo 3 probably has kind of the weakest, worst Flood. Still, these bad boys that just shoot us while kind of looking like a flower or whatever are really annoying. There are a lot of different flood forms that we could talk about as well, like the flood infected human forms where if you shoot off their arm, they just kind of stand around and really not do anything. It is kind of funny. You can just kind of bring one with you if you feel like it and they can't do too much really. I don't know, at this point, is it really an enemy or is it actually an ally? Okay, and then there's a forgotten type of flood that literally could have been the basis of this entire video. I can't believe we almost forgot to talk about it. But in Halo Combat Evolved on the Maw, there's invisible flood forms. This is the only time in all of Halo do we have invisible flood fighting us. And it's just one select level in Combat Evolved, and we never would see Invisible Flood ever appear again in a Halo game. I don't know why they never came back, but it is interesting to say the least. I think that those do deserve some recognition if we don't necessarily consider them the best of the best. I think generally as the Flood as a whole, Halo 2 still has the best version of it, but individually, these 
invisible dudes on the Maw definitely deserve their recognition. Okay, we have the Prometheans from Halo 4 and 5, and these guys, oh boy, what an introduction, what a new class that we got to fight against. The Knights in Halo 4, in my personal opinion, were amped up a little bit too much. I know they wanted to make them a little bit stronger than an Elite, but they honestly were maybe a little too overpowered. They could teleport around, they were these bullet sponges, and then you pair them with a Watcher and they could be resurrected after you killed them, which I thought was really annoying. And don't even get me started about the Watchers. These guys are so annoying. They're little You just shoot at them like one time and they try to fly as far away as possible and it's just just can't stand the Watchers in Halo 4. So tying those together, I don't know. I actually didn't mind the dogs in Halo 4. Yes, I know they're called Promethean Crawlers, but I think dogs is just a funnier name for them. They actually felt kind of satisfying to kill. You could kill them with pretty much any weapon. And they were a good, like, first level enemy to fight against when you're battling it out with the Prometheans. I actually think Halo 4's crawlers were probably better than Halo 5's crawlers. Halo 5 did do some pretty big revisions though with the knights and essentially made the knights a little bit stronger, which you would think would be what a dumb move, but they reduced the total number of knights and made the knights more of a power class of Prometheans instead. So when you do fight them, it's more of a challenging enemy and you're not just constantly fighting them over and over again. Instead, in the place of what the knights were, Promethean soldiers were introduced, which were a little bit easier to kill and those were more frequent. So Halo 5 did find the balance with the Prometheans, but I still think the Prometheans weren't nearly as fun to fight as things like the Covenant or the Flood, and it probably contributed to why we don't see them anymore in games like Halo Infinite. Though I think if they ever chose to do a storyline that brought back the Prometheans in one way or another, and they still kind of mixed it in with some other enemies like the Brutes and the Covenant and the Banished and how they're doing stuff now, they could potentially still work. But yeah, Halo 5 did a great job at revising the Knights, I think. And in turn, also the Watchers in Halo 5 were slightly less annoying, still annoying, so I guess Halo 5 gets the better Watchers too. Oh, and there was the Warden boss fight. Wasn't sure if this counted because we didn't really talk about boss fights of other Halo games as much, but yeah, I mean, I guess that did exist as well. Okay, I'm also glad I do get to mention a couple other one-off enemies that you also fight, even if there aren't multiple iterations of them. We have the Marine that shoots at you occasionally on Guilty Spark. Um, he's the best and the worst. There's also those good old Gutas in Halo Reach's Nightfall that kind of rampage all around angrily fighting everything. Love this. This one is just a best. There is no worst version. The only worst version is a version of Halo that doesn't have this, which are the rest of the Halos besides Reach. I don't know. The Gutas are kind of fun. We have occasionally fought monitors, surprisingly enough. I mean, in Halo 3, we have this very anticlimactic boss fight, and then we do fight this monitor in Halo Infinite, and I guess the one in Halo Infinite is a little bit more badass than Guilty Spark, so we give it to Infinite here. So overall, we've looked at all the enemy classes. Which one is the absolute best and which one is the worst? I think for the best category, it comes close to either a Jackal Sniper from Halo 2 or a Rocket Flood. And I think that you, with enough strategy, you can take out all of the Jackal Snipers. We see skilled players do it in lasso runs and there is some predictability, though we've seen Rocket Flood just absolutely destroy runs and you can only prepare for them so much. So we're gonna say that the CE Rocket Flood is probably the strongest enemy class or the most threatening enemy class in that regard. Guard. Best looks though, those golden hunters in Halo 3 ODST definitely are really cool. For the worst enemies, I think the grunts take it for like the weakest or most fun to fight, bad, not strong enemy. Though the engineers do come a little bit close since they literally have no offensive moves whatsoever. Or if we want to talk about like annoyingly bad and frustrating enemies, then the Halo 4 Promethean Knights probably are the worst because they were close to being good and they just kind of fell short with a couple of programming decisions late in the game with how fast they can teleport, how the symbiotic relationship between them and the Watchers are. 
the fact that they can come back to life, it just kind of was too many buffs for the knights. But that's just our opinion for every single enemy. If you think that we missed something specific about one of the versions and you disagree with us, they'll just let us know in the comments. We will read them, so it'd be interesting to see what you think are the best and worst. I know best and worst are kind of generalized terms, so we tried to pick and choose multiple categories as we just went through each individual enemy. And I think we did a pretty good job at just kind of acknowledging all the different ways something can be the best and also the worst. All right, well, that's it for today. Hey, thank you to our patrons for all of the support, helping us work on new projects. We have something big planned, and if you guys want to help support us in making this big new project that will start next year, maybe jump on the Patreon train now because maybe we'll be teasing some of the stuff soon to our patrons first. Otherwise, that's it for today. Make sure you subscribe and notifications on for more videos. We'll see you next time with a brand new upload.